Welcome back everybody to Disco Elysium. It's 7.35 a.m. in the morning on day four, so it's Thursday. We've explored the area on the other side of the canal and found, among other things, Morel, the husband of Lena. So let's go and tell her about that. Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. I ran into your husband on the coast. Goodness, H how is he? Did he say why he hasn't returned yet? The old woman clasps her hands together over the blanket. He's fine, ma'am. As we had suspected, he couldn't get back earlier because the water lock on the canal was broken. Now he's just finishing up some work. Yeah, and then he's coming. Oh, yes. That's my morale. He's bound to catch a cold staying out there for so long. But I am so relieved to hear that he's okay. Thank you for putting an old woman's heart at ease, if even a little. Yeah, no problem. You haven't, however. There are dangers out there. Our aging bodies fail. Her heart won't rest until Morel is safely back with her. Okay. I know I could talk about a lot of things, but I don't want to drag it too much. Uh, okay, Gart. I want to really sing. Can I help you? About my bill for tonight, Gart. I need to sing karaoke now. No, you don't. It's not happening. You need to approach this situation logically. Ask him why he has the PA system installed if you can't use it. Yeah, but look him in the eye. Johnny Law is about to tear it up, sad style. <laughs> why do you even have the PA system if no one's going to use it? It's for the... It's for no one. It's a prop. I'm not letting anyone use it after the great karaoke catastrophe of 44. What happened in 44? A lot of people got killed because some arsehole wanted to sing karaoke. It's not a prop, it's for your clients, I know it's used. Okay, yes, it's for some clients. He admits reluctantly, I'm a real client, I've paid my bills, and I have the right to use the karaoke machine. Ha! Well, we don't have any tapes. They all got stolen. But I have some. He's lying, but whatever. You don't really need his lame tracks. It's all right. I have my own song with me. Give him the tape for Smallest Church. The man in the vest and the violet shirt stares at the tape you've just given him. He begins to frown. Hard. Uh-oh. This is the look of a man who's defeated. He knows he's out of excuses. <laughs> fine, fine. Climb on that stage and do your thing. Just get out of my hair. He shakes the tape I'll at you. I'll plug it in for you. Damn this karaoke machine. I'm having it uninstalled, he mumbles to himself. <laughs> oh yeah, time to do the damage. Can I really... I, I can go and do it now. Now, the question is, do I have to have music on for this? The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. I'm just singing for you, Kim. You feel a little dizzy, a little unsteady suddenly. Uh-oh. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. I have 83, but it's, it's a one-time chance. So, let's leave and put some clothes on that guarantee that I have more drama. I have stuff like that, I know it. Do I have anything removing? I have plus three drama right now, but I think we can add to that somehow. Drama minus one. No, 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 we don't want plus one drama. Oh my God, plus four. Oh God. Oh yeah, that's the one in the fishnet tank top with the little necktie and this kimono. Just hanging off my shoulder very seductively. That's it. That's the one. That's that is this is so disco. Alright, I'm ready. The stage is you feel So uh, are you ready for 97 now? Let me know what the air is thick with anticipation. This is gonna be so good. The tape clicks into the carousel and then the music starts. Let's go. <clears throat> I would often go there To the tiny church there 
the smallest church in San San. Though it once was larger. How the realm may rest there. Down through the mist there. Toward the Seven Sisters. Toward those pale cliffs there. I would often stay there. In a tiny yard there. I have been so glad here. Looking forward to the past here. But now... You are all alone. None of this matters. No, none of this matters. At all. Magnifique. Beautiful. Task complete. Not bad. A rather lonely applause echoes through the most empty, mostly empty cafeteria. It's God. Not bad, he tells you with an approving nod. Yes, not bad at all. The lieutenant joins in. You feel your hands shake as awareness of your body returns to you. Thank you, ancient reptilian brain. <laughs> thank you, I don't need big crowds. Yeah, thank you, reptilian brain. No reply. There is silence now in the deep where the voice came from. It has receded into you to return only in dreams and nightmares. I don't need big crowds. I just need my friends. Life is a fucking joke. Thanks for bearing with me. I'm gonna get back to work now. Just need my friends. Okay, yes. I'm going to unplug the microphone so you can get off the stage now. Okay, thanks, guard. No, no, no. I'm gonna sing some more. Hell yeah, Will. No, we need to... <laughs> Thank you. Um, I want my... This back on. Yup. Also, can I have, like, a white shirt underneath? Oh, look at me all cute! Goody, goody. Alright. That is another thing off my list. I'm very happy about that. Who put the clothes in the trash? Analyze Gary's composure. The pissing competition. The... The... the composure. I could put stuff in composure. Did I already do that, maybe? Wait, is, it, is that av available now? Kuno legendary. Oh, we could go and see if we can actually analyze Kuno. That would be so magnificent if we could. Let's go. Okay, let's see. I, I already saved, right? But let's let's talk to Kuno. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Fuck, does Kuno care? 42, we can try. Hang on. Kuno doesn't yeah, I know you don't care. You don't care about nothing. Let's see. Empathy. Empathy. We have plus one empathy. We need more empathy, chat. Come on. There gotta be some... Oh, plus one. Uh, come on. Give me empathy. Mine is empathy. No, no, no. We don't want that. Okay. Anything that removes empathy? No. Okay, good. We good. We good. Okay. Let's talk. Fuck, does Kuno care? 58. The ledger gives empathy. Oh. Kuno doesn't fucking, fucking care. I know, I know. Tools, right, tools. Plus one empathy. Okay, okay, so this gotta work. Fuck, does Kuno care? 72. What's going on? Is an ungovernable youth on your crime scene thrown around incendiary language, trying to push your buttons? 
Hey, Kuno, think you can turn the Kuno down for a moment? Kuno, listen, I know this boundary pushing thing is new to you, but it's old news for us grown ups. Kuno, you must have seen all kinds of things throwing stones here. Want to help the RCM bust a murderer? Fuck no! <laughs> what are you? Fucking mentally handicapped? Kuno, they've almost made you a snitch now! Ease off, see? Kuno always takes the bullet over the hammer. He nods big boy style, incredibly proud of himself. He'd rather die than work with the justice system. I need to figure out this kid. Kuno does. Fuck, does Kuno care? It's not Kuno. Yes. It's Kuno S. Interesting, how? Kuno S is by far the worst of the two. Kuno has no problem being near you, but the other hides behind the fence, afraid for her life, like she's done something, something very bad. Continue. All in all, Kuno respects madness. You cannot hope to outdo her on that front. You must win yourself a few minutes with him alone. Act on it, try and separate them. Kuno, psst. Fuck you whispering about. He whispers back. He's whispering too. He's going with it. But watch what happens. <laughs> Both of them like... <laughs> Fuck you fuck whispering about! Shush! She puts extra stress onto that word, expecting it will make you uncomfortable. But it doesn't. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? Let's whisper, pig. <laughs> Let's whisper, pig. <laughs> Continue. This is it. You've got him. Got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. Kuno, listen to me. She's trying to control you. We gotta get you out of here. What's up with her? She's terrifying, crazy scary. Phew, am I glad she's out of our hair? She's fucked up. She tries to control you. It's okay. The pig's trying to pit us against each other. Not gonna let him do that. Idiot. You bungled it up. Damn it! That's it. You let him off the line. That was a bad, manipulative thing to say. You should understand. I got you this far. I couldn't get you all the way. Oh, God. Oh, well. You know, I thought if I would say she's trying to control him, he's like, nobody's going to control me, mate. Safe scum, do it. Load time. You guys want me to load? Try to fuck my kuno. <laughs> Try to fuck my kuno way. Me and kuno are tight. We ride for life. Try once more to figure him out. Find a way to connect with him. I don't have to load. I have this. It's 92%. Talked about the kingdom. Let's try this. What's going on? Is an ungovernable youth on your crime scene, thrown around incendiary language, trying to push your buttons? Damn it. Oh, man. Okay. Get your snout out of Kuno's ass. Kuno knows how hard Kuno pushes it. Kuno pushes it hard level. Mm hmm You should give up, Popo. Or the cun will keep fucking it out of you. You okay, Kuno? The cun has her confused. That went wrong. He took it as a compliment. Then he had a minor seizure. <laughs> okay, Mark. Kuno doesn't fucking care. All right, chat says load. Let's try that again. Kuno's a tough one. He is, really. I failed a 92% chance, by the way. I just want to say that. Did I have any clothes that I put on? I had the ledger? All right. Okay, let's save. All right, we have 83% chance. Let's go. It's not Kuno. It's Kuno S. Kuno S is all in all. Fuck you whispering about. Fuck you whispering about. He's whispering too. He's going with it. But watch what happens. Fuck you, f whispering about. She puts extra. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper. Okay. Let's whisper, pig. <laughs> it's like this. This what. This is what made me think that if I say the controlling thing, that he would be like annoyed at her because he's like, if I want to whisper, I'm gonna whisper. You cannot control me. So I thought this is a good this idea to it. go with. You've got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Okay, what's up Don't with her? Make She's Kuno look bad in this. She's terrifying, crazy, scary. Not scary, scary. He doesn't care. He's not scared. But maybe fucked up. 
She's not fucked up. Everyone's fucked up. Stop judging shit. Wrong move. But he's whispering still. You haven't lost him. Just don't mess up again. Or you will. There are no guarantees here. This didn't work last time, so maybe this? Crazy scary? Crazy? You don't know the half of it. She's not crazy. She's insane. Dangerous. She smoked a man. She's done people in. Probably even pigs. Stop talking to him! Kuno, I'm fucking warning you! You're gonna get us into shit! She understands what you're trying to do. Oh boy. Yo, see! Did Kuno not tell you? Kuno told you! Kuno talks to whoever he wants! Talk, pig. Kuno's got it under control. He hunches down again. You did it. They're separated. He's even turned his back to her, so she can't read his lips. Fuck. She can read lips. You should cup your mouth. What do you mean she smoked someone? Kuno means she killed someone. That's right. She's a killer. Like, actually a killer. He stares at you intently. His little green eyes are fixed on yours. He's meant everything he said before. But right now, he not only means it, he is sincere. Oh man, am I, uh, am I, am I, st have I broken him? Can I just talk to him now? Or am I gonna F this up and he's gonna close up again? You're fairly safe. No, I think you're safe. Okay, good. Thank you. Is he too small to overpower someone? Are you getting this? You think I'm fucking telling you a joke here? How hard do you think it is to kill a fat ass? Sweet talk him, then knife him. She's probably killed a pig too. I mean, I'm pretty sure she has. Come on, she hasn't killed police officers. I knew you pigs were too naive for this shit. Good thing Kuno's got her under control. Kuno keeps her calm. He feels eyes on the back of his head and stops. A cop would be too large for her to overpower. But a determined child of her size can still kill the vulnerable. The elderly. The homeless. Or other... other children. Oh god. The creature peers at you both from over the fence. There is something searching in her eyes. Fear. I mean, what? I mean, this this world seems to be pretty shitty, so of course that has an impact on these kids, but damn. Kuno, do you think it's possible that she killed other children? Kuno falls silent. He does not look at you when he replies. Kuno, there, that's it. That's what Kuno is starting to think, yeah? Oh god. Don't move your head. Just from the corner of your eye look at her look at her though her friend spoke too low for her to hear kuno s is not smiling anymore do you think she has anything to do with the dead man yeah she would have liked to fuck him up but she didn't kuno wasn't around and c was with kuno where were you look kuno's gonna put you at ease we didn't do it Okay. He speaks the truth, my liege. <laughs> Shut up, drama. You said she's insane? Yeah, she's psycho. None of that kiddie psycho. Cap in and shit. She does the real deal. What's the real deal? Snuff radio shit. Believe me, pig, you don't want to know. Snuff radio? The computer thingy? The ra radio computer? And he doesn't even want to think about it. This isn't just another boast. What's that language she uses? Fuck knows. She says it's the song of her people or some shit. What people? Crazy people. The fucking Nakis. I don't know. <laughs> Sounds boreal. Like something from the tundra and tiger covered cutler, Isola. Far, far away from here. As far as possible, really. Do they have red haired people there? You mean evil little red haired people like her? <laughs> yes, they do. The Suruis have that ginger gene. The ginger gene? Ooh. I honestly, I always like ginger. Like, I love I love the coppery hair. I think it's beautiful. And I kind of like freckles too, so. Could she be Suruis? Suruis? Like that man from Shelmdol shit? She could be. She could be that Shelmdol shit? She could be. Revelshot does have a small Suruis community. Or 
She climbed into a yakberry crate and was shipped over accidentally. She your sister? Fuck no, she's not me sister. She's just a stray who got in. Like a mad dog or some shit. Stray? Yeah, she was just there. He points at the apartment building behind the fence. What was that, Kuno? The little one twists her neck looking at the building. She was in the hallway, dripping wet, by the fucking shoe rack, in the dark. That hallway there with the janitor's closet? Yeah, that's the place. She was just balled up near the closet, psycho style. <laughs> psycho style? Why was she dripping wet? Rain? Kuno's got no fucking idea. Her hair was all wet. I think she pissed on the floor too. She was there for three days, in the corner, every time Kuno went out. You know this. The body goes into a kind of revulsion shock. Murder hangover. That's what it could have been. Murder hangover from when she... Killed a kid. Yes. Makes them look for a quiet, dark place and just hibernate there. Usually goes on for a few days, up to a week. Oh, God. Must have been her first one. You only get it on the first one. Return to the conversation. You said she got in how? I don't know. Someone left the door open. Kuno comes home. She's sleeping under the desk, under the pile of clothes, like a dog. What about your parents? Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit. Doesn't even see her there. Or thinks it's fucking Kuno. Shit's all on Kuno. Aww. Kuno. Kuno S. Two of a kind. Why is she called Kness then? Because she fucking looks like Kuno. You don't know her name? No one knows her name. Kuno told you this shit was psycho killer. How are you dealing with all this? How's Kuno dealing? Kuno's dealing just fine. He doesn't need you fucking with any of it. C doesn't either. Kuno's got this shit under control. <laughs> he spits through the gap in his front teeth. She needs professional help. You can't do this alone. Listen, listen. I'm listening. C is Kuno's go-to. Kuno's protecting her. You fuck with C. You fuck with Kuno. You threaten her. You threaten to take her away. This is what it all comes down to. He needs you to take him seriously now. I take you seriously. I, I'm going to kill you. I'll run when you put the cuffs on her. Sneak up on you later and fuck you up. You understand? The boy looks you in the eye. Black pupils rising to folk, trying to focus. He may not be able to do it, but he will try. Right now, he believes he will. Under Sir Kunu, I can't respect that. Who are you kidding, kid? You can't take down a man several times your size. You'll end up dead yourself. I can't respect that. All right. Now we can do business. Business? He's breathing heavily. That took something out of him. Okay. Business? Yeah. What do you want? Kuno can hook you up with... He starts, no longer whispering. Don't hook him up with shit, Kuno! See, relax. He respects the Kuno. Kuno made him respect the Kuno. You respect the Kuno, you get all kinds of shit. Kuno's gonna get you hooked on illegal narcotics if you run a little errand for the Kuno. Get you hooked, pig. Get his hook in you. Then Kuno gonna get you hooking for more. Cash in big style. Pig <laughs> cooker. See, it's tension and release with Kuno. Now we releasing. The pan buying shit, that's on now too. 90% discount for Kuno's pig. Kuno can flex. Kuno flexes for hobos. Kuno sees you're in need. Should I buy those? I kind of want the set. Fallen modular track pants, sub and physical instrument. They kind of look cool too. But it's like 15 bucks and I have 22.57. So I, you know, I. if I don't find another place to sleep, then I, I, I don't have a sleep place unless I'm sleeping under the boat. <laughs> Get the pants. It's disco. They're good. Two plus ones. Yeah, not, not a minus, right? The boat is a solid sleepover. All right, guys, let's go. Let's get the fallen modular track pants. Here, pig. We've fallen now. Performance buddies. Kuno unzips his jacket again and pulls the pants out of the plastic wrapping. Kuno can already see you soaring through the air like a fucking eagle. Pig's in Kuno's debt now. Money debt. I paid you. Money debt doesn't mean anything. He's just saying words. You're not in his debt. Okay, I'm off. Kuno doesn't fucking care. I know you don't. And that's fine. I can't believe I got through to the Kuno. Can you imagine? I got through to the Kuno. Find the murder weapon. Get two signatures for Evra. Add even more beauty to the wall. 
Oh, we could try that. Isn't that right here? Right here around the corner? Come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I want to get shit done. I probably will fail this again. Can I try? Oh, no, I can't. Okay, never mind. I thought I could try the wall again, but nope. Then... Call the station about the dead body. Call Jamra Public Library for information on the library card's owner. Okay. So I could give up on the task. But they open up at 10, so I need more time to pass if I want to investigate on my own. Can I tell these fuckwits to leave this place? Uh, Gavi Crypto... Did I... Did I skill Composure? I did not, but I'm very close to another level up, so... Hmm... Oops, sorry guys, misclick. Church doors, we could try that! But I need to fast travel there. No, I just have to run, okay. Guess we're rolling! A few moments later... Where's this goddamn... Church... Maybe I should try to th talk to this person? I haven't been here, have I? The way she goes, buddy boy. Okay, let's try the church door. If I can find my way there again. Somewhere in this direction, I think. Do I have to go over here? Was it there? I don't know, guys. Here. Oh, a thought. A kick drum pulse. The music is coming from somewhere on the ice. Yeah, here. Okay, I think I need physical instrument to do this, right? Wait, is there a light shining through this? Maybe there's a way inside after all. Didn't didn't Kim say there's a way inside if I go this way? Oh, it doesn't look like it. All right. I was running around the church a few times now, so we need physical instrument. This. Okay, plus two should be fine. Okay. Let's try. Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand. You jam the pry bar between the lock and the staple and apply force. Your biceps bulge from the strain. The metal creaks and squeals. The pathetic old wood, rusty screws and one nail stand no chance against the forces of leverage. From deep within, a bellow rips. <laughs> Suddenly, the pry bar snaps. Metal shavings fly everywhere. The upper half, between the lock and the staple, falls to the ground with a thunk. Look at the broken tool in your hand. The fuck? How is this even possible? I broke the pry bar. Where do I get a new one? The fuck? Tools break, officer. Try to control yourself. What the? For example, see how calm I am, although you broke my favorite pry bar. The broken edge of the snapped pry bar is smooth. Took the tip right off. What the heck? I don't know. You don't? Or maybe we'll find a new one. I don't carry more than one pry bar with me. He looks up the bell tower. I thought this was a lousy way to enter a place of worship that's already in disrepair. I guess the church agreed. Yeah. This was surely just a freak accident. The fuck? Now what do I do? I guess we just live with the consequences? I don't know. We could load, but... People are very sensitive about safe scumming. Um... Okay, that failed. Then... I have nothing else to do other than going back to the town and... Is it over here? No, this way. And talk to the people in the village, right? Well, that was bad. Relax, it's not yours. You didn't crash every MC in Revershall, hopefully. Shut up, thoughts. Okay, first off, let's talk to the lady here. Old grandma. Inside you hear the cozy sound of some kind of theater. A uh, heater, sputtering. Soliram young manis. What? Hello, ma'am. <laughs> the woman next to a bucket of clothes hums an odd melody. Her eyes are closed. You're not sure about the melody, but it might be Saf Samaran. Possibly Sigehan, also known as the Apricot Suzrinti. Welcome to the fishing village. Please lean in closer. I have cataracts. 
If you can't see, then how did you know I was there? Lean forward. Oh, welcome, police officer. We don't cause any trouble around here. And we don't want any trouble either. Yeah, me neither. That's we good. are not here to cause any trouble, madame. What he said. We're cops. We don't cause trouble. We take care of troubles. We're cops. We're hellraisers. Click, click, bang, bang. <laughs> oh, of course. Last time we saw you around here was 12 years ago. You also came to take care of trouble then. Wish you did. But still, in Martinez, you're considered an ill omen. Wait, I've been here before? No, not you personally. I meant the RCM. Some of the men got into a fight. One of them killed another. Locked himself in that woodshed over there. She points to the building behind her. He was boarding. Needed some help opening the door. You got it open for him and took him to think about what he'd done in a more secluded place. Somewhere more quiet. She says it as if he was on some kind of spiritual retreat. What kind of ill omen are we talking about? Oh, the usual. Dark tidings. Black hound. I see. That's you, all right. A black hound licking your own heels. If I'm considered an ill omen, why hasn't anyone told me that? Maybe they are afraid. Mm, why? Because you're an ill omen. <laughs> but you're still welcome here. As long as men with guns aren't chasing you. And maybe even then. Because that's the kind of fishing village we've built. A refuge for people who are being chased? By other people with guns? I'm sorry there's not a lot of room to park your motor carriage. And not a lot of houses. Or a lot of people. My kids are long gone. Searching for treasure. So are others. Alright, continue. Ah, look at me ramble on. What brings you to us? Where could someone stay around here? Stay? Most people here are trying to leave. <laughs> that said, if lodgings is what you're looking for, I've got a free room in the shack. Ooh, her soapy thumb points to the building behind her. How much is it? I won't charge you for it. Take it as a gesture of goodwill from the village to the RCM. Oh, so I could sleep in here. Sweet. Hold on, you're just giving it to me? No one is using it, and God knows it's not much anyway. You can stay there. She tilts her head to on the side, pondering over something. I'm not sure it's appropriate for the RCM to accept free accommodations. There's this guy, God, who makes me give him money every night just so I don't die out in the cold. Okay, I'll take it. Get keys. Don't make an old woman regret opening her house to the police. A key appears from under her apron. She hands it to you. Thank well, you. if you are not in the hostel in the morning, I'll know where to find you. Here, in a shack. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Kim. He's a little relieved you're no longer in that room. He is? Why, Kim? Should he? This environment encourages one thing, and one thing only. Drinking. But I won't. What is in the fishing village? What further down the coast? Tell me about yourself. Who exactly are you here? I found this jacket, but it's filthy. Could you wash it for me? I can wash it for you, but it's going to take about a half an hour. Think you can stay put for that long? Sure thing. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. No, we must run around ceaselessly. It would be torture to stay put. I could use a breather before another rainy day begins. Yeah, I'll wait. Well, hand it over then, and I'll see what I can do. This is perfect because I want it to be 10 a.m. in the morning so I can call about the library stuff. Mercy, I'm proud of this one. It's pretty nice underneath all that filth. I hope you'll have an easier life in your hands. Just us. It's barely a village anymore. We almost don't exist. What do you mean? This is pretty much a non-place. She grins. A gap. A blank spot on the map. Just a cluster of nameless shacks on a nameless street. Street? The place is so pornographically poor, it's not even funny. This place is pornographically poor. There's got to be something here, tell me. Over there, you can find more of the same. Shacks and trees growing wild. That's the pox. The pox, what's that? An old military hospital and its surroundings. Or it used to be, during the time of the suzerain. After the war, it was turned into a goodwill hospital for shell-shock veterans 
and folks looking for some quiet in the old sanatorium gardens. Now the area is crisscrossed with nameless streets and makeshift cinder block houses. Shacks as far as the eye can see. What happened to the hospital? The goodwill ran out. The staff left and the place was shut down. It's long gone by now. Who else lives in this village? Well, there's Lillian and her kids. A few new folks live in the house to the east. But they are away right now. And then there's the drunks. Not a pretty sight, but there's little we can do about it. Home is home, even for them. I met Lillian already. Lillian is tough. Tougher than the men here, at least. If it wasn't for her and the kids, this place wouldn't have a spark of life left. I haven't seen any drunks yet, though. Sooner or later, you'll see for yourself. Don't have to look long to find these guys. Is there a way to make a little money around here? Here? For you? No, officer. The only money we have here is some coins the drunks try hiding from their women and then forgot about. <laughs> Oof. Under carts, boats, in little boxes, it's not hard to find. I think I found all the coin already. All right, there's another topic I'd like to address. She nods, rinsing another piece of cloth. Okay, what's further down the coast? Not much. There's the abandoned church, the Dolorian Church of Humanity. It's been there since before my time, even. Why is it abandoned? Some things just don't fly, officer. Look around. Who'd go to church here? They built it 300 years ago. Must have been nicer then. So... They don't hold services there anymore, the Ecclesiastes. No, we've tried, but things just keep happening. Crime, accidents, other things. The place never stays open. It's a pity. It used to be such a nice church. She's not telling you all she knows. Keep her talking. I get the feeling you're leaving stuff out. What else is going on? Well, there's that music. Music from across the sea. It started a few days ago, and now it's blasting, even through the night. And now, suspicious-looking people are sneaking around the church. I don't like that. I don't like that either. We should investigate. Those would be the dance music enthusiasts in their tent. What else is down the coast? Before you get to the church, there's some ruins, an apartment complex, or some kind of electrical plant. Run down bunch of houses. Empty. Which, which is it then? Apartments or electric plants? I don't know exactly. A pre-war place. It used to be something. Before the war. I wasn't here then, you know. Was born in Samara. Anything else of note? Of note? The old fish market up on the boardwalk. But it's closed. Okay, got it. As I said, it's a peninsula. There's no one there, just ghosts and vagrants and teenagers making out. Tell me about yourself. Who exactly are you here? Me? No one. Just an old washerwoman. Mother called me Isabel, if that's what you're asking. And my married name is Sadie. Adler? <laughs> now it's your turn, Mr... Lieutenant W. Freighter Harrier Dubois. Quite a handle you got there. So many titles. One of them double. Yeah. I was asked to get your signature. Okay, goodbye, I'm off. Hang on. Do I really have to get her signature? Isabel and Lillian. Okay, I do not want to do this. I want to have random people sign. Oh my god, the jacket was the fallen windbreaker? No way. That is so cool. I'm looking so fancy! <laughs> looking super stylish! Awesome sauce. Do we have any glasses that just have bonuses? Not really, huh? I like this one, though. They're the smarty ones with a thick bottom glass, you know, like of a bottle. <laughs> the, 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 the bottom part of a bottle. This is how thick the glasses are. All right. Now, we could talk to the kids. Is this the shack that I got the key to or this one? Oh, 
Oh, how cozy. Industrial coal pallets burn with an orange glow. <gasps> Ruffed grouse taxidermy. Oh my god. Can I give that to Gart and say sorry about the bird? Who are you? Hello, mister. Little Lily. A young girl, barely four or five years old, sits on the sofa. She's looking at you with frank curiosity. She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. Are you Lillian's daughter? Yes, I am. Little Lily. You she, know my mom? She gazes at you with her big eyes. Yes, we met earlier. That's nice. My mom is great. She's never angry or anything. What's this? Show her the stuffed bird you took from the ceiling. It's a grouse. She yelped, smiling broadly. You might be able to get on Gart's good side if you make up for the school you broke. But what's it for? I don't know. Okay, can I have it? I know someone really likes stuffed birds. Sure. I mean, you already took it. I don't like it anyway. It looks angry. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I'm gonna take it away so you're not scared anymore. What's the thing you're holding? It's Lammy. He's my friend. So, like... She holds the fuzzy beast up to demonstrate. Funny is that I was watching an episode of Dr. House and there was a kid and it has a it had a plushie and it was also called Lammy. It was just two days ago or so. Coincidence? Hmm. Lamby is a stuffed lamb that, admittedly, has seen better days. <laughs> One of the eye buttons is missing and the fur is tattered in several parts. Lemmy look like he's falling apart. Lemmy looks soft. Oh, well, okay, well, pleased to meet you, Lemmy. Lemmy usually doesn't like strangers, but you're also fuzzy, like Lemmy. Yeah, we have so much in common. Okay, goodbye. Bye! The girl's large, curious eyes remain fixed on you. Doesn't look like a lamb to me, to be honest, from my angle. Oh, she cute. Cute kid. Come on, hurry up. Okay, so I guess this is the house that I rented then? Or like, rented in... The door has seen better days. The layer of paint has started to peel off due to the salt and wind from the sea. Even the lock looks slightly rusted. Unlock the shack door with a key. I'll wait outside to give you some time and privacy to check out your new living arrangement. But just so you know... Yeah. After we are done with the day... I'll still be staying in the whirling in rags for the night. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. Okay. The key turns with a satisfying click. Click. You can enter the shack now. Cool. Ooh, okay. Wait, I have a thought. Oh, oh. This intricate heat engine hums quietly, giving you pleasant warmth. The floorboards creak under your step. Using a thermodynamic expander condenser cycle. Nice. Old science fiction magazines, books about bird watching, an almanac from 39. What's this? Is that a shaving On thing? On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it, a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. Is shaving the right call? The water reflects back a vague image of your face. Nose bulbous and red, hair unkempt. Wrinkles lining the eyes and forehead. The stash is gigantic. Gigantic stash, all right. Continue. You'll be looking like a pansy without the chops. A fucking pansy. <laughs> uh, what do I need? Hand-eye coordination. What's this? A little window? You see the waves, the sea, a church. What's in here? Koryev jacket plus one logic. I like when things just have bonuses and not like a little bonus, but also a debuff. Oof, that sucks. Hand-eye coordination is what we want, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if we have anything there. Plus one. Do we have anything that removes something? No. Okay, let's see how we would fare now with this. On the table, you see a bowl of water. A rough your hand trembles as you scratch your cheek. Oh no. That's not how a grown man shaves. This isn't sharp enough. Scrape harder? Leave it for Thank now. Thank God. I would have cut your throat. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Continue. The centipede is exaggerating. People don't actually cut their own throats when they're shaving. At least, not accidentally. 
Okay. What's this? An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see the reflection of your face in it, adorned with the expression. Okay, let the beer, mirror be for now. Let's see if we can have any... What was it? Electro... Was it electrochemistry that I need? I think so. I think I have a few things to buff that up. Plus two. Hmm. <laughs> What's here? Take stuff, Bert to Gart. Can I try An this now? No, it's still locked. I have you to skill it if I want to, huh? Electrochemistry. The expression. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think I want to do that. It's not that important. Okay, let's put the clothes back on that I like. I want to be all fancy pansy. Nice. Goody. Okay. Let's go back. I don't want to sleep. I don't know if he's gonna say anything about the bed or not. Hello, Kim. I wonder if they have a merch store with exactly this outfit. I know there's a merch store to get the bomber jacket for Kim, though. That I know. But I wonder if Fallen is also a thing. Okay, so we talked to her. We talked to her. We haven't talked to the kids. Let's see if they actually have anything to say. The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone. He can't be more than five years old. Hi, kiddo. The other one looks indistinguishable from him. He watches his brother kick the stone with his tongue lolling out of his mouth. You must be Lillian's twins. Is little Lily your sister, according to the house? Yes. Oh my god, the voice though, it's so cute. Yes? Yes. That's it? You're being laconic about it? Okay. Yes. Yes, okay. You must be Lillian's twins. This one doesn't say anything. Kicking the concrete with his worn-out sneaker. Lily's our mom. Explains the other one, tongue still lolling out of his mouth. I already said that. The stone kicker laughs suddenly. His head is too large for his shoulders. The other one laughs as well. Wow, so intellectually stimulating. Yeah, I feel intellectually stimulated, big time. Mm -hmm. The stone kicking isn't even of very high caliber. <laughs> Anyone can do that. <laughs> you guys look identical. I know, th I know there's identical and non-identical twins, but it's like, you're twins. You look identical. It's like, okay, Captain Obvious, children are stupid. Bye, kids. <laughs> okay, so we haven't talked to these fellas here at all. Good to see you, friend. Do I have deals set up for you, buddy boy? He spreads his arms as if wanting to embrace you. No touchy, no touchy. Does he actually know you? Or is he just shopkeep friendly? Uh, what are you talking about? So what do you want? I got smokes. They're cheap. Very cheap. I got pills now. Great deal. You won't get a better deal on that piss. Spirits I can let go for 300 real. I also have speed. And by speed, I mean amphetamine. Friend, do we know each other? Quite the business venture you've got up here. Why does the bottle of spirits cost 300 real? I'm off. <laughs> In the civilized world, it's a custom to tip the shopkeep, friend. But come back anyway. He waves you off. Okay, can I talk to this fella? Hey, tequila! Okay, sorry. A 30-something man clad in a two-piece licra TM <laughs> tracksuit puts down his pilsner and extends his hand in greeting. Good to see you. How's business? How's the whole reality situation treating you? Don't shake his hand. So what's happening? He wipes his hand on his dirty licra pants and picks up this beer. Wait, tequila? Nice meeting you, but I've... Tequila? Yeah. Tequila sunset. How are the, um... High concept reality based adventures proceeding. Idiot Doom Spiral, by the way. Interesting name. <laughs> he says it like it's obviously your name. Like you call someone Billy Brunel or leader of the Fourth Street Gang. Good. These people know your true name. Looks like it has preceded you, Mr. Sunset. More on that later. 
Not too hard. I'm on a 42-year losing streak. Uh, reality, it makes me aggressively sad. I don't know. People tell me I'm a cop. I'm getting used to that. I have a re-enter reality to conquer it. To bend it to my will. I am the law. Well, nice meeting you, but I've got to go. Bend it to my will. I am the law. That's the spirit. I used to shape reality into my image. And then? Long time ago. Those days are over now. He looks at his shit-stained Lycra jacket with a grim expression. Sadly, things aren't going that well in Idiot Doom Spiral Land. Haven't found those keys yet, haven't won that great piece of ass back. No word from my business buddies. He takes a sip from a beer. This guy's your buddy buddy. You feel it immediately. You belong to an organization, a fraternity of drunks. Of drunks. Okay, um, do you guys, could you guys, could you and your pal sign this document? What's it about? He waves his hand uh, apathetically. I'll let my hand address the situation. Yeah, let your hand do with the thing. Maybe you've heard. I used to be a very successful Oh, businessman. okay. I've signed more than a few lease forms or whatever the fuck they were. Anyone's got a pen? The pro's gonna do it. I have this blue oblong pen. Lend him your pen. All right. He grabs the pen and paper and carefully scribbles on the dotted line next to Lilian's signature idiot doom spiral. I need at least two signatures on the document. Hey, Abs! Shouts to the mumbling drunk hey, guard next to him. Abs. Hey, Abs! This guy? Don't you? You call Abigail? Don't call Abigail. I need you to <laughs> sign this document right here. He waves the it's paper and pen. Important. In front of the man's face. Don't call her. His trembling hand catches the paperwork. He lays it out on his knee and starts writing slowly. The handwriting is almost illegible due to his shaky hands. Don't call Abiquao. His friend grabs the document <sighs> and admires it. Great job, Abs. Nailed it. He hands it back to you. Can I have the pen back too? Don't know if I've mentioned it, but I used to be a businessman. And as a businessman, I am going to keep the pen. For my trouble. He nods confidently. You've done a great service to the village, to the RCM at Rivershaw. Hey, guys. We're heroes. Big heroes. About fucking time, man. I've done my duty. He brings his hand up to his head for salute. <laughs> Don't call Abigail. He snorts and takes a swig from his bottle. The bottle is empty. <laughs> Thank you for your services, gentlemen. Should we go and mail this? I think I saw a mailbox on the plaza. A few more questions first. Mailbox plaza. Got it. Plaza, as in the main area, right? Okay, so if I go to the entrance of the village, which I think was here? Can I fast travel from here? When do I know that I'm in a fast travel area? Ah, now. Ooh, ooh. Waterfront, church. You're here. Travel here. Oh, I'm fast traveling. See? I did the thing. Okay, mail delivery thing here. The dented yellow mailbox greets you with its graffito and bullet holes in the front. I knew we'd get to use this mailbox for something. Yes, for sending mail. Drop the white envelope into the mailbox. You drop the white envelope in the darkness. It lands with a soft thud on what sounds like a couple of letters. Okay, continue. Probably did the right thing. You can't trust that slug, Everard. You know he's going to play you somehow. All right, let's go back to Everard. If we don't mention anything to him, he won't know before it's too late. Good mail delivery box. Yo, you're a good mail delivery box. The box seems happy. Okay. Good. Very good, very nice. Okay, so now we go to Gart and give him the stuffed bird. That was a fast travel, mate. Yes, a fast travel. I fast traveled. Okay, Gart. Because you let me sing karaoke. I'm very grateful. Here's a bird. Ah, smallest church in Saint-Saëns, right? Yeah, the church is actually my past. <laughs> yeah, the church is actually my life. Yeah, the church is actually my love. Things are really bad with it. Fucking rock that shit. Told you I'd rock that shit. Oh. My life? I fucking rocked that shit. <laughs> it was alright. Subdued. 
I might start letting people up there again. Now, what can I do for you? I found a new bird for the whirling. What is this thing? The man takes a stuffed bird. It's no biggie. I just thought it would look nice on the wall. I'm that kind of cop. It was actually me who broke the great school. I wanted to apologize by bringing you this rough grass. I should have known Sylvie wouldn't accidentally break things here. Okay, this is actually a nice bird. A competent piece of taxidermy. Why is everything black? Well, I can fix it to the plaque and have a new bird in the establishment, I guess. So, I don't know. Thank you. I'm gonna go with thank you. You're welcome. People just don't know how to accept gifts. Especially taxidermy. He likes it. He likes the bird. It solves his broken bird problem. I mean, that man was standing there for four days, staring at this broken bird, and that's it. That was his life. Staring at the taxidermy bird. This was mostly about the fucking cardio. Massive cardio here. You'll live till 90, or you get a heart attack from running. <laughs> okay. I feel good about our work here today. It's all about the little things, like bringing people random stuffed animals. I'm glad you agree, Kim. It's not actually about that, but he liked it. Okay, goodbye. Good. Now, what else What did we want to do? Let Evra know. Okay, let's go to Evra. That slimy bugger. Great, now I have tequila stuck in my head. <laughs> Sorry, it's just what's going on in my head. Alright, run it! It's almost... It's almost 10. So maybe soon we can call about the dead guy by the beach. Tequila! <laughs> Oh, Leo's still sitting there, my god. Mm, okay, let's save. I hope I can fool him. Mr. Dubois, every worker. Member of the board? That's right, Mr. Dubois. I see the socialist democratic fervor now burns in your heart, too. How can I help you today? I'm told the union is involved in the local drug trade. I've just finished investigating the local drug trade. It's done. I mailed the signatures you asked me to mail. The golden boy returns once more. Wonderful. Simply wonderful, Harry. He claps his hands together. Of course. I already knew this. Like a child who's just been offered cotton candy. Of course I already knew this. Okay. My friend, the mailman, confirms the letter is on its way. You've done a great thing today. You've given the children of Martinez a real future, Harry. And I feel I can finally trust you now. Oh. You're in my inner circle. You too, Mr. Kitsuragi. We can talk about anything. The strike, the murder, your lost gun. Nothing is off the table. I want to talk about my lost gun. Judging from how happy he is, it looks like you did it. He doesn't appear to suspect trickery. That is good, because I just tricked his ass. Well done, sire. By guile and deceit, you're in. The signatures I got, I know you plan to force them out with the construction noise. Did you order the hangman killed? Can I get my gun now? Harry, I've got to be honest with you. Your gun was found two days ago. Withholding this information weighed heavily on me. But it had to be done. Okay, where is it? An old woman has it, and let me tell you, Harry. Word on the street is she's a character. So watch out. This must be the woman who bought the gun from Roy. The one he described as terrifying. So the gun's with... Still with the woman who bought it from Roy? Yes, the same one. I see you've done your research. The pawn shop made the gun easy to track. Crazy stuff, Harry. Selling your gun like that? Wild. Anyway... <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Union boy's gonna help you fix it. He winks at you. Don't worry, Harry. The neighbors of this old woman contacted my men because they trust me and the Debardeurs Union. 
Apparently, she was waving it around at the entrance to her building. Waving the gun around doesn't sound good. None of this does. Uh, she was waving it around at people? Who is this old woman? She was waving it around? As I said, she's a character. I didn't have time for details. It sounds like she's unstable, but don't worry. No one got hurt. But who is she? Do I... I, I can't really recall an older woman apart from the crazy one by the lorries. And Lena. Hmm. It sounds like a very disturbed and desperate individual. We might be looking at someone with a medical history here. Watch out. Who is this old woman? Unfortunately, I don't know anymore. You're gonna have to go in blind, Harry. But she's an old lady. How dangerous can she possibly be? Oh, and she calls herself the Pigs. There it is again. The Pigs. Like Roy said, not good at all. I, for one, find it refreshing. Finally, someone calls themselves a pig. The smile flickers in the corner of his mouth. It actually sounds extremely bad, but let's not give him the satisfaction. Can you set up a meeting? I already have. Tonight, starting 10 o'clock, near the old fish market on the coast, the one on the boardwalk, a little past the fishing village. Be careful, Harry. I would never set you up for anything dangerous, but you did ask for this. Now, back to the fun stuff. She will be there from 2200 hours till 0200 hours. Okay. More fun stuff. Seems like we already have fun stuff to do. Did you order the hangman killed? Order it? You know my men didn't kill him. They told you. It was a happy accident. You know how it is. No one takes the initiative. If I wanted him dead, I would have had to do it myself. And I'm too fat for that. Why are you so fat? Glad you asked. I've got type 2 diabetes because sugar and fat was all my mother had to give me and my brother Edgar when we were kids. Uh-huh. Good job too, as it made me ugly. And ugly people, Harry, are much better at politics. Is that so? <laughs> that is true. People don't trust pretty people. What do you gain from being from him being dead? Why a war, of course. And what do you have to gain from a war? Victory, Mr. Kitsuragi. I have victory to gain. We are going to start a war with the Wild Pines group and win before they even realize there is a war. Have you ever heard that what two giant Serais hornets can do to an entire colony of bees? They destroy it. They've trained military people. Aren't you afraid for your men? Harry, we outnumber them 1,500 to 1. And that's just Martin A's. With all the unions in Rebishol, and with public opinion on our side, we can hold off two men, or 15 men, or even 50 men. The more they send, the worse it's going to look for them. They made a huge mistake hiring those guys. No one likes foreign mercenaries. The leftists hate them, the fascists hate them, even the moralists think they're in bad taste. How is this connected to the strike? Harry, there is no strike, only war. Class war. Or, in business terms, a dawn raid. Or wait. Is that when you still pay them something? Because we won't do that. We're not gonna give nothing. We're gonna take Terminal B away from them. The roads, the gates, the containers, that big crane, even the damn coffee maker. Not the coffee. We're gonna take all of it for the people and fuck Wild Pines. He is very emotionally invested in this. So that's why you haven't let Joyce in? Yes. It's also why I let that midget Gormont go. He's too nice. I can't put him through this. Plus, he knows how to get in here. That woman can't tell her tits from her asshole. She has no chance. <laughs> what? Tits from her asshole. It's a local saying. Is it no? <laughs> Actually, no, it's not. Why are you telling me your plans? Because we're friends, Harry. Are we? Besides, it doesn't matter now. You can go tell her if you want. It won't change the course of events. We have a significant head start. Okay. It's already happening. He looks at the swordfish clock and nods. It's already happening. The signatures are gotten. Who killed the hanged man? No idea. Could have been his own mother for all I know. If you ever find the guy, give him a big fat kiss from Everard Clare. Couldn't have done it without him. 
He really doesn't know. Okay. A guy, huh? How do you know it's a guy? I don't. I told you it could have been his own mother. I'm pretty sure it wasn't anyone from the Union. Maybe it was the mob. Or maybe he killed himself because he was a closet socialist. Truth is, I simply don't know. Okay. He really doesn't. Okay, how many of you guys are there in the Union? How are you going to fund your new independent harbor? Oh, you mean what sort of goods are going to be flowing through? How am I going to replace all the contacts we'll lose once the poo-poo hits the fan? <laughs> the clients will ditch us. Harry, we've thought of everything. Mm-hmm. Clients would take a well-known multinational conglomerate over a local mobster any day. You can't possibly, possibly hope to continue like you have. Clients will leave en masse. Sure, some will go, but mark my words. The company will be unpleasantly surprised to see how many of them stay loyal to Martin A's and to the new competitive contracts we can offer. With renewed zeal sparked by communal ownership, the men will be shipping those containers double time. You'll be surprised to see how fast things go without parasites latching on. We'll have our hands free to pursue bold exotic new revenue streams. That's drugs. Drugs? Drug trafficking. Drug trafficking? Don't be stupid, Mr. Kitsaragi. There are perfectly legal, 100% ethical chemical factories on the Samarin Isola. You don't need to be colonialist about it. All they do is produce components to keep the pharmaceutical industry running. That's people's health we're talking about. Old grannies, little babes, people with disabilities. It's just the top of the iceberg though, isn't it? God, that sounds shady. Digging it raw, I have to say, I'm digging this part. Yeah, that's just the top of the iceberg, right? The company thinks transporting these chemicals in bulk looks bad. Has bad optics. May be illegal in some countries. The Debardes Union, however, we're all about the large volume column. In bulk shipping, large volume column is a major buyer. A shark. We're gonna transport the living daylights out of those materials, Harry. So your sick kid can get his benefit, and your wacky uncle doesn't have to come off Risperazol. Benefit is a children's cold medicine, usually apricot flavored, and Risperazol is used to treat severe psychosis. Oh boy. And the kids on the street can get speed and pyrolidon. I'm an old fashioned guy, Mr. Kitsuragi. I sometimes grab a beer with the boys, but I have no idea about the things you just mentioned. He smiled. But if I were to supply ingredients for some sort of rainbow party, I would make sure the union took a fantastic share. And I'd keep that stuff far away from Martin A's. He's basically admitting to it. Is Ruby helping you secure this fantastic share? Harry, if I was supplying raw materials to drug manufacturers, I would need an army of rubies. And this to it. Lieutenant nods slowly. Drugs are a no-go for me. I'll report this. I have to admit that's a well-put-together plan and far removed from you. Interesting stuff. I just want to solve this murder, okay? Makes sense to regulate the drug trade like this. Keeps it out of more dangerous hands. I report this. Yes, yes, of course. And while you're doing that, please go ahead and also tell the Wild Pines. He snickers. I want to hear them squeal from the indignity. Hmm. Anyway, let's not focus on the sensationalism of the drug trade. This hypothetical drug trade is all anyone ever seems to be interested in. It would only be a small part of the harbor's turnover, just like the harbor is, but a small part of Martin A's. It would still be illegal. So is there a trade or isn't there? Go on, say nothing. It'd still be illegal. Let's look at the big picture. Martin A's as a whole. There are little girls out there with dreams of making music. Young mothers who want to start businesses. Models who want to walk catwalks and steel welders who want to weld steel. I'm going to unite them all into one economic body. We're going to incorporate this place to kingdom come. Everyone's going to be in on the wealth. And everyone's going to pull their weight. Well, I mean, if it has the word incorporate in it, then I like it. I'm a money guy. That's very ambitious. I love that you're doing for the working man. I'm not feeling a whole lot of revishol here. Not enough flags or, or kind, kings. Honestly, it's not my place to judge or express an opinion. Harry, the length you're willing to go to keep your nose clean is remarkable. You will always have a warm bed in Mr. Clare's household, my friend. And a special place in the future of Martin A's. Ooh, can I ask about a specific union member? Let's see. We're way past specific union members now. This is the big time. 
We're talking about the future of Revachol here, Harry. You can bother Leonard with that. He loves to run his mouth on such matters. But I'm in big time mode, Harry. Okay, that's it for now. Great, Harry, great. I think we have truly built a bridge between Martinez and Jamrock today. Have we? We have united the RCM and the Debardeurs Union. Suddenly there's sadness in his tone. Oh no! This has been so great. I'm sorry we don't have more fun things to do together. But if you ever feel like bouncing something off me, my door is always open. Yeah, because you don't have a door. You're in a container. Okay, I'm told the union is involved in the local drug trade. I've just finished investigating the local drug trade. Are you going to tell me how I got in? Uh, how do you know my name? A few more questions about the harbor. Can we go over a few details concerning the murder again? Turns out the strikers are being served an alcoholic brew. It made even stronger. Okay, well, I'm going to leave now. I don't want to talk to this guy. If I don't have to. Okay, and confront the pigs and get your gun back. Someone's been running around with your sidearm, pretending to be a police officer. You must meet her near the old fish market at 22 and get your service weapon back. Just walk past the fishing village until you see the boardwalk. Is this where we found the corpse? That's a bit creepy. Can I see somewhere how many skill points I have available right now? Because I had a skill point already available, and then I had another level up. I have lots of physical uh, physical instrument things here. Cargo container, door, rhetoric, rhetoric from Hyundai series. Composure. Smoke on the balcony, another composure. Hmm. Those squares are skill points. This one? So I have one here? Oh no, here, this one. Okay, um, I don't know where to put them yet. Kind of, hmm, I kind of want to link it to these things. Gary, I kind of want, I think composure. We have one, two, three. Okay, we're going to go with composure. Okay, now I can try them. Actually, I just wasted one point, right? Because I could have tried and then see what how, how it goes. Uh, how do I get down here? Sorry. Lots of skill checks that are no longer available. Yeah. I wish they would be just gone from the list then. That would be nice. Should have done that first, I know. But I had lots of composure stuff already in the past, so I, can't, I think it makes sense to do that. Hey! Oh no, I have to go to the pawn shop if I want to sell some postcards. Sorry. Just realized. Okay, so... We have Plazier with a composure, was it? Definitely the smoker. Hi again, Gendarm. 17? It's the sports. He's a sports guy. All about that physical prowess and athletic skill. Nothing else here. Damn it. Failed that. Okay. Hmm. Uh, oh god, where was it? I have to leave this first. Bye bye, gendarme. Gendarme. I think he's flirting the crap out of me, you know. Uh, René and. I think it's also Clausier. No, Gary. 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 Okay. Oh god, close it. <laughs> so, René Arnaud is right outside. Maybe we can try him. I assume he's still there. There he is. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look open. No, I didn't click on this. Can revisit. Stop it. I just clicked in the nothingness, you know. Vigilance officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? Hang on. Composure. Do we have any clothes that are helping me with my composure? Anything? Come on, give me composure. Come on, there. Okay, we good, we good. Anything equipped that removes anything? Hmm, okay, let's try again. Oh, I have a thought. Hear that? Magnesium. That's what you're lacking. The lack of magnesium has you slouched. So there's a lack of magnesium in me? Yes, and it's critical. Look at yourself. You're practically devolving into a fish 
due to the lack of magnesium in your bloodstream. I need to mag it up. So I need to mag it sideways and mag, mag it up? You need to get so magged up. You've probably had two heart attacks and a minor stroke already. <laughs> what? And the only prescription is insane amounts of magnesium. Okay. One stroke? Don't be so modest. He's having one right now. You're saying I need to become a magnesium-based life form? Yes. If you want to live, you need to evolve. Okay. You need to transcend the carbon barrier. <laughs> Go to the apothecary and buy insane amounts of magnesium. It will reverse the damage to your circulatory system. Okay. We'll think about that. Vigilance officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? This. Still, all you see is an old soldier refusing to replace his uniform with a civilian attire. Anything else I can assist you with, officer? No. I'm a failure, bloody hell. Okay, we can fast travel to... Did I have to stand right outside here to fast travel? Fisherman shack here. I hope that Gary is still there. Oh god, um... Which way, which way was it? Here... I think it was on the other side, right? I'm not sure, actually. This way, this way, I think. Yeah, yeah, this is right. Okay, Gary. Let's save and talk to Gary. Always a pleasure to see an officer of the law. I mean, officers. Why, why is he shifting around like that? Analyze Gary's composure. That shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together, as if something is ready to rip out from underneath. His massive musculature, something worn underneath? Yes, like a piece of ceramic armor, for example. One that makes a clicking sound when the plates meet each other, resembling pearls or marbles. Stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. Oh my god, I see a connoisseur of high quality combat gear. I knew you'd figure it out, officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I was... He unbuttons his shirt. I was ashamed of what I did. And I didn't want you to know. You see gleaming white ceramic shine underneath. A thin layer of interlocking plates covers his gaunt torso. We're not detecting falsehood, sire. He's gearing up to admit the truth. This shame is surprisingly sincere. Gary, what's going on? Later, Morale. I've got apologizing to do. <laughs> do it. No, you've got explaining to do. Give me that armor now. He sighs again, hangs his head, and unbuttons his shirt fully. A cuirass that matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon, it is in your hands, smelling of his sweat. Ew, why did you really put those clothes in the trash? Everyone was picking those pieces off him, and I was watching them do it. And they'd scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling. That is the same thing you told me earlier, Gary. So I went there to take out the trash and started cleaning up. All those rags on the ground, him swinging up there, and I had a lapse of honor, sir. I thought, he's a foreigner. They all say he wasn't from here. Only the caress was left. So I stripped it off him. It was early in the morning. No one saw me. I took it with me. It was a mistake. Had I known it'd give you guys trouble, I... I wouldn't have... His lips Fuck. part. Quivering. We're detecting sincere contrition here, sire. He's not trying to flatter anyone. It's okay. It was a loose end. And you are tying it up now. I'm so fucking sorry I called you Yellow Man. Sealite officers commanded the Suzerain's navy. Most of them sided with the king when... He shakes his head. They were thoroughly conservative men, he realizes suddenly. It's difficult to say what the lieutenant thinks of this historic apology. His face does not belie emotions. Why did you lie to me, Gary? Because I was weak. I should have told you the moment I saw you, but... But? The hell, Gary? You in trouble? I'll explain later. He doesn't muster up the strength to tell. Do you know who killed the hangman? 
I always thought it was the Union. Some Union hard asses lynched him because of the strike. But almost everyone in town knows that. I wish I could tell you more. Okay. This is all he knows. Are we done here, Gary? Yes, absolutely. I will never do anything like this again. I got my eyes on you, sir. Okay. Got that done as well. Sweet. Um, I don't know what I got here. But we did get this. Plus one pain threshold. Plus one empathy. Ooh, I can wear it underneath my jacket. Cool. Magnesium-based life form. <laughs> The white ceramic cuirass hugs your torso, shielding your vitals without adding much bulk to your form. I, re I will be responsible with this. This is just to protect me from harm, not to show off. Decked out in future armor like a cub ought to be. <laughs> the hardened, vitreous enamel, at once sleek and light, adds a glow to your cheeks and a spring to your step. Just imagine what a full suit of this stuff could do for you. Yeah, but I won't get a full... Full suit because I already sent the corpse with a with a feed off. You really do feel more confident. Invulnerability does that. Even partial invulnerability. One down, two pieces to go. Here I come. I want the full suit. This gear could line my pockets with cash. I could probably sell it to some other cop. This is the long sought after enemy technology. I can't just enjoy it. I must study it. Two. Are you sure you're correct there? There was a helmet too. Three pieces more like you were ambitious. Okay. But are we really t removing in the calculus, are we removing the, the, the boots, yeah? It may be a while before you have all the pieces. In the meantime, you should analyze the armor. Figure out its vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities? Remember, this is a highly specialized kinetic redistributor meant to stop bullets. Wear it. Observe its properties. See if there's a weakness in the design. For the day you have to fight someone covered in the same material. Ooh. Well, that is a good idea. Okay, I can unlock... Maybe I can discard one of those? I feel like most of them are pretty good, though. All endures white checks unlocked, leering cap... Learning cap for endurance race to this. Cap for perception. Speed, speed gives ones. I think I can remove this one. Forget it. And here we're gonna fair weather, blah, blah, blah. Internalize that. Good. Okay, cool. Now, it's over, it's past 10. So maybe now we can go and call the, the library. Guys, I still have to get used to this place. <laughs> the layout of this. I think it costs levels to discard and replace a thought. Never mind. No, I think you need a level to unlock a new one. But discarding one doesn't cost anything, I think. Goody, I hope I can fast travel now. We want to go... Here? Yeah. And then we call the police. Or the library first, right? Inside, you see a set of steering levers. A radio microphone. A pull-out. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Jamrock Library. Hold on, officer. I've got Central Jamrock Public Library on the line, and I've already introduced you to the librarian. Connecting the call in two, one. Yes, this is Central Jamrock Public Library here. How can I help you, officer? He sounds worried, yet ready to assist. This is how people get when the police call. I'm looking for an information that you can provide on Billy Mijon, a reader. Billy, Billy Mijon, you said. Give me a moment, I'll have to check our database. He puts down the receiver. Yes, hello, are you still there? I found Billy Majan's home address, is that alright? No phone number, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. They're too poor to have a phone line. Yes, home address is fine. Here we go, sir. Rue de saint Gislaine, 33B, apartment number 20. It's in Martinez, I believe. Capeside Apartments, it says. That's all. Okay. That's where the smoker on the balcony lives, isn't it? Do you have any other information on Billy Magin? It 
says here that they returned their last book just a few days ago, but I wasn't at work that day. Do you know someone who was? Marie? Marie? Do you remember a reader named Billy Majon? They returned a Tibalt book the other day. You hear someone answer from afar? Yes, it, it was my colleague Marie. Uh, she said that it was Billy's husband who returned the book. He also asked for this new sci-fi release, Lowe's Radio City 87. But we don't have it yet. Mm-hmm. Good. You have a name now. So Billy Majin is a woman, not a man. How did your colleague know that it was her husband? Marie knows Billy. She's been working here longer than me. Sometimes her husband returns some books for her. Oh, sweet. And then goes for a little drink later. On the lookout. Do you know the husband's name? Sorry, no. Marie only knows him by sight. Can Marie describe to me what the husband looked like? Marie! A moment passes. She said it was an older man, and that she's pretty sure he'd had a drink or two the last time she saw him. That sounds about right. What was he wearing? Uh, one second. The librarian turns away from the phone again and relays the question. Sorry, Marie wasn't really paying any attention to that. Okay, makes sense. Thank you, that's all for me. I have no other questions. Happy we could help. Goodbye, officer. Anything else you need from me? Please connect me to Sylvie. I need to report a dead body on the Martinez boardwalk. One moment. You can hear her shuffling through some papers. Can you please describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death? An unidentified... Fied, middle-aged man, height, blah, 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 dark hair, medium build. Looks like he slipped, fell through the hole in the boardwalk and hit his head against the... But I, I have... Hmm. Damn it. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There, there were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any signs of violence? No, it seems like it was an accident. No field autopsy necessary. She repeats. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? He was wearing boots, trousers, and an old leather jacket with a bright blue lining. I found a library card from his pockets. Any information on the library card? It's from Central German Public Library. It belonged to a, someone named Billy Mejin. Good. You have a lead. Do you and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? We're taking the case. I have assigned the case to Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. Thanks. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? No, I'm done. 57. In the cabin, you see a set. All good. We're gonna go to the place now. Maybe we can tell the lady about her deceased husband. Uh, this way, right? I wish there was a fast way to the, um, the living quarters. So I don't have to go all around every time. Smokers back. I think this way it might be the fastest. That's Kuness, oh my god. She's crazy. Absolutely psycho. Okay, now the question is where are we gonna find the lady? Have you been in here? Yeah, we have actually. Okay, now the question is where exactly does Billy live? Maybe here? You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. Was it 10? I don't remember. Knock. The walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the door. You can feel tension on the other side. Knock again. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. This time the steps come closer. Who is it? Demands a female voice, very intense. Does police open up? Do I have to? You hear the crackling, clacking of heels again as the other side walks right up to the door. Her tone is now getting a defensive edge. Do you have a warrant? I'm not obligated to open the door if you don't have a warrant. I th hmm. Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. It's generally easier to do things if you have literally any reason. Mm. Maybe if I go up? I don't know which door it is exactly. Is it not the lady? I thought that's her. Maybe if I go through here? No, this is, is this not the exit? No, it's not. How do I get... I forgot how to get to the place where the, the smoker was really living. 
You need to stand near a fast travel area, then open the map and select another one. It's where the smoker was outside. I forgot how to get there. <laughs> That's my problem right now. Um, was it through here? Yeah, I think it was, right? Down here, and then the other door on the side. Here. Was it this? Yeah, okay. Maybe this door? Or maybe one up there? Oh. A weathered brown door. The number reads 20. The lieutenant motions to you to go ahead and knock. Okay. This is the door. You already know it's the right door. This is going to be so hard. Hold on, Kay. We should discuss this before we move on. What should we expect? You're right. It still is true. He looks at the apartment door and lowers his voice a bit. We have our first preliminary identification. In all likelihood, the deceased is the husband of Billy Mejean. We need to confirm this, as well as deliver the death notification to Billy herself. Now, delivering a death notification is never an easy task. There's a reason why it's often called the most stressful part of our job. This is why it's usually done in pairs. You got this. I'll be monitoring reactions, ready to act if necessary. Do you have any advice on how to tell her he's... Dead? Just don't say that you know how they feel. You don't. Good advice. What if I don't want to do this? Kim, I don't want to do this. Let's turn around, try to bail out. All right, I think I'm ready. The lieutenant motions towards the door. Hello? Who is it? A voice calls out from the other side of the door. Look at the lieutenant first. This is Billy Magine home. This is the police. Please open the door. The police? A moment, please. Give us a moment. Us? You hear shuffling inside. There's fear in her voice. Us? Come in. The door is open. What do you mean, us? Does she have a visitor? The clock is ticking away with an odd cheerfulness. It's ticking makes you anxious. Rings hollow in the room. Posters of contemporary pop stars adorn the walls. Textbook of high school mathematics. Trigonometry, mostly. I never know how to pronounce these things in English. Trigonometry. <laughs> Windows covered in old newspaper clippings. What's in here? What's this? Some leftovers kept warm from the stove. Okay, I had a thought right here. Can't they afford curtains? <laughs> Maybe not. All right. It's you from the book stand. Yeah. For a moment, she seems paralyzed, just looking at you and the lieutenant, then she snaps out of it. She must know you're here because of her husband. Yeah, I already said I'm going to find him. I don't think I introduced myself properly. I'm Billy. Would you like something to drink? Tea? Lemonade? We're out of coffee. Mm, that's fine. The lieutenant has taken off his foggy glasses and is busy cleaning them in his handkerchief for now. You're on your own here. Oh, goddamn. He must feel vulnerable without his glasses. Is this why he's letting you take the lead? I'm not really here for the tea, thanks, but I'm all right. Is this about Victor, my husband? Is he in some kind of trouble again? I can come pick him up in the station if that's what. She stops, her eyes trying to read answers from your face. Keep it together. You don't want your body language to tell her the news. Sorry, I'm rambling. She it's just that Victor often gets into all kinds of trouble. So, how can I help you? How about some small talk before you break the news? No. It's like ripping off a bandage. The least painful way is to do it straight away, without stalling. So, how have you been? I noticed you were cooking something. You live here with Victor, your husband, right? Let's just give her the news straight away. We have a 97% chance. Kim is there? Wait, I want to I wanna see the whole thing. Kim is there. Identify the leather jacket. Identify the library card. Kept your composure. Discuss things through with Kim, lieutenant's handkerchief. <laughs> Obviously, Kim's handkerchief is doing the trick, guys. This is going to be the icebreaker. 97, let's go. You've done nice. this before. Just keep your focus. God, do I just say he's dead like that? Ma'am, I'm very sorry to say, but your husband, Victor Mijon, was found dead on the Martinez boardwalk. What did you say? A great and terrible spike. The blood freezes in her veins. Your husband, Victor Mejean, is dead. I'm very sorry for your loss, ma'am. Oh. 
She touches her neck, uh, eyes pale like pearls in seawater. Oh, but he was just... She looks at the kitchen table where two cigarette butts are still on the tray. But he was just here. Alive. What? We understand this comes as a huge shock. I want you to know that me and my partner are here for you if you have any questions. Take your time, ma'am. What happened to him? She turns to you. Her neck and cheeks are covered with red blotches. Her double chin is shaking. It's still early to say, but at first glance it seems like he slipped and hit his head. It was an accident? At first glance, I'm gonna say this. I don't want to be, like, dead certain and then tell her something else later. Was he drunk? Alco may have played a role, yes. We don't know yet, but we will let you know when the results are... May have played a role. I see. And you just found him there. Lying in the cold. Yes. How long had he been there? If you say two days, maybe, it will be etched in her mind forever. It's hard to say at this point. It could have been long, two days maybe. It's hard to say at this point. She blinks, eyes welling up with tears as her hand starts searching for something from the pockets of her dress. Here. The lieutenant takes out his handkerchief and offers it to the woman. He nods and she nods and slowly wipes her tears away. Is there anyone we could call for you? A friend, a family member, someone who could be here for you? No, no. I just need to tell my girls. The air gets sucked out of her lungs suddenly. It burns like acid. Oh, man. God. Should I call them? Should I tell them to come home? Maybe. No. A day. Yes, they should know. Do you want us to call them and ask them here? Take a day to recover. You'll be better prepared when they come home tomorrow. Good. That's probably the right thing. Thank you. She nods, but with a wretched expression. Just tell me, what do I need to do next? Where is he? Can I see him? Continue. We've taken him to the city morgue. The local coroner will be contacting you shortly to arrange the funeral. Here's his number in case you want to contact him earlier. He hands her a leaflet with the morgue's contact information. A very good call. Is there anything else that the RCM could do for you? No, I'll call you if something comes up. I'm still... But how are you gonna call if you don't have a telephone? She rubs her face, runs her fingers over cheeks that have become numb. Thank you. Thank you for telling me. I'll call if... She runs out of breath. These are her last reserves of strength. Her muscles will give in soon. Already, she starts to shake. I'm very sorry, ma'am, again. We should step outside and talk. Set the library card by her. Leave her room. You wanted to talk him? You did well. The lieutenant, the lieutenant says as soon as you've left the apartment. The balcony feels cool and quiet with a sun stunning view over the district. What now? Could have done more. Great, the case is closed. What now? I'll call the station when we're finished with the day and let them know the name of the deceased. That's it? What about Billy and her kids? They'll manage. They have to. It's not your place to live their lives. That's it? That's it. We should get back to our case now that our duty here is done. Right, this is closed then. Let's go. Okay. Actually, <laughs> what I wanted to do today was stick to the main story a bit more, but I have no idea what actually triggers the main story in this area. Find the murder weapon. Perform advanced analysis using HE co coordination. No idea. Investigate doom commercial area. Scap leader. Clasia about tattoos. About Sunday night, sorry. Taisuke Ruby's location. Maybe this? Maybe this is what I actually have to do. Make go to make make go to Titus and talk. How do I get out of here again? Here through this? Titus, Titus, yeah, Titus. Okay, let's see. I don't know what I need. Is it physical instrument that I need? Logic. Oh boy. How is my logic? Plus two. Anything that adds logic? Minus logic. Plus logic. 
Hmm. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, now we have plus three logic. Oh god. It's you again. What is it? It says impossible, but I have a 97% chance. Found key in union box, saw the winch outside, staged like a play, reconstructed murder scene, classy gave motive, plus three secret root found. Ruby is a drug trader established. All right. A sudden flash of lightning in your neocortex. The hostile cafeteria is lit by its airy blaze. Floor plans, bullet trajectories, webs of human emotion, all channeled into a single thought. Why are you so sure Ruby didn't off him? Because she was here, all night, with us. He's cobbling together shit so he can put her away. It's COP 101. She was here all night, 11.30 to 12.15. She was here during all that time? Yeah, with us, drinking, near the stage there. He points to the karaoke stage. She didn't go to the toilet? No. That's a lie. You know, that's not... You know that's not the case. And the whole 45 minute window she was with you all the time? All right. She took a fucking leak, okay? For one moment. Maybe went out too. She has an operation to run from her lorry. We're not getting into what that operation is again, Kalb. That's probably for the best. Don't break your stride now. And just because she was gone for five minutes doesn't mean she magically got to the roof and shot him. I've been through this. It's not plausible. All right, we're in. We got Ruby unaccounted for sometime during the window. This was crucial. Now let's place her on that roof. You do agree the shot came from the roof, right? Why not? You can't draw a straight line into Clausius' window from any of the surrounding buildings. Not from what I know about Martinet. Maybe from the coast, but like I said, I've been too busy dealing with you idiots. So no, I don't think it was a sniper. It was close up. There's a 72% chance that the bullet came from the roof. 72%? There's a percentage and all. Where'd you get it from? Your guys in the lab? From here. <laughs> Smart bullet, thanks for the 500 biddies. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Definitely lie. The truth is not credible. Yes, we have a ballistic lab in Koran. We consulted in case like these. Wouldn't hurt to have one of those in Martinez. Still, all the labs in the world don't put her on that roof. How'd she get there? Climb. There's a secret route in the kitchen that leads straight to the roof. How? Oh. He looks sincerely curious. Through what looks like an abandoned pinball workshop. Mm -hmm. People say there was a pinball arcade here. Sometime before the hostel. What was it called, Theo? East Delta Pinball Arcade. <laughs> Weird place. Went bankrupt. Okay, but how'd you get up? There's no room for a staircase in this building. Or an elevator, for that matter. Um... The elevator is outside the building. It's an old dumb waiter, used for moving pinball machines up and down from the workshop. Good one, Kim. From there, a door leads straight to the roof. You can just step outside. Ruby could have gone up, shot him, come down. All under seven minutes. That's quite the theory. We need to have a look at that secret passage, boys. I'm on it, boss. Right when the law clears, me and Angus are going up there. Poor Angus. <laughs> it's a dumb way to, not an industrial lift. How about I go instead of... <laughs> Shanky! Just now. You got something else to back this route up? Or is that it? Have you noticed the winch out back on the outer wall of the whirling? I've seen the winch. I'm not blind. You saying it's part of the elevator she used to get up there? That's right. That's wall mystery down there. An architectural mystery. Doesn't much concern Ruby, does it? There were pinball machines in the workshop, still operational. I don't know if that is interesting. I also found footprints upstairs in the world workshop. Footprints? Recent? 
The tracks were recent, but not worn down in the right foot like Ruby's. It's best to omit this pesky little polemic for now. Too confusing. Recent? But they didn't fit with any of yours of the scene, Ruby included. There were prints there with horizontal lines. Not recent, yeah. What else could you make out? How recent? What size? They were about a week or two old. That close, huh? How fortunate. I'll take a thorough look at those prints myself before I believe that call. Okay. Good news is, I'm still listening. Remember that I, that key I found there? Point to the window. I don't like guessing, Carl. No one <laughs> does. It opens the steel door in the kitchen. The one that leads upstairs to the roof. This key was right here with you. All the time. You didn't find it, but Ruby did. That's how she got up there. Quit jumping to conclusions, Theo. You took that key. Did it look like it was recently put there? No, the ribbon was old. Faded. It had been there for 20 years at least. She could have made a copy. And then put it back. Why? It's damn interesting you found it there. But it doesn't fit with Ruby. And you know it. Hmm, but she's the best suspect we have right now. It doesn't fit well, but it fits. And he knows it. Had ex what have we firmly established? Ruby could have had access to the roof where the man was shot. Firmly, firmly doesn't go well with could have. Hmm. There's a route to the roof. Me and the boys need to check it out. That's what we established. Okay. But a route does not put that bullet in his head. A gun does that, and Ruby doesn't carry one. Phase two, murder weapon. Get a gun in her hand. If not that, then at least a shadow of a doubt. In the shape of a gun. <laughs> shadow of a doubt in the shape of a gun. Just don't contradict yourself. If it doesn't sound like Ruby did it, maybe keep it to yourself. I've already established Ruby's running drugs. She could have smuggled guns too. I have anal analyzed the bullet that killed him. It was jacketed. There is a small 28% chance that shot came from beyond the roof. The local pawn shop sold my gun to a woman. Maybe it was her. That makes no sense. Because I came here after he was shot, right? I hope. Um... God damn. That's just about your favorite topic, isn't it? Every fucking five seconds. Yep. You were warned not to bring it up. Your best shot here is to just back out of it. Okay, I'm not getting it. Ch charges your precision... Precious business. Okay, cop. She's got connections. I could see how she could have access to a gun. That still doesn't mean she did. Okay. That's all you needed. Doubt. I have analyzed the bullet that killed him. It was jacketed. So... The man shrugs and looks at you. So it had to come from a breech-loading rifle. Military grade. Not even you militia monkeys have those. This goes against your everyone has a gun theory. If it was military grade, how'd Ruby get it? Just because it's rare doesn't mean you can't get it. I'm just being upfront with what I know. You're right. I'm never solving this case too complicated. Right. That's mighty forthcoming of you. I know. So, let me extend you the same courtesy. She's connected to you know what. Do you know what? Organized crime. Down in Jamrock, probably. He's not being too forthcoming. This is not a surprise. So she may have access to semi-automatics, but that's a long fucking stretch of the imagination. I didn't say I'd prove she had the murder weapon, just say we need to find her. All right, Carl. Keep talking. I'll tell you when I've had enough. Pete, we're not seriously considering it, are we? Ruby wouldn't do this. Why would she do something like this? Phase three. Motive. The last component. Okay, the motive. Let's go. The big one. Get this and they'll give her to you. Remember, don't piss him off. That never works. It's not why did she kill him. It's why did she organize the cover-up. 
Quasi told me some pretty interesting things about Ruby. Maybe it's all part of a leadership challenge against you, Titus. When Quasi came downstairs, Ruby appeared to know. Okay, um, definitely this one, I think. Quasi told me some interesting things about Ruby. Yeah, like what? Apparently she had a thing for Clausia. Sex, she wanted sex from her. Let's not get into this neat sen sensationalism. She had a thing for Clausia. A thing? You mean? He tilts his head to the side and falls silent. Behind his squinting eyes, dominoes are falling. Fast. It's all beginning to make sense to him now. Yeah, but... They're both girls. <laughs> yeah. So it's impossible. <laughs> girls like girls too, Angus. Sometimes. This is one of those times. She liked Glacia. No, it's bewildering for me too, but that's what she said. Come on, guys. She hangs out with you me meatheads. This cannot come <laughs> this cannot come as a surprise. Yeah? No. <laughs> Ruby's got more balls than a ball pit. You'd have to be an idiot not to Guys, I'm not the only one who knew. Right? Knew what? First he says she's murdered him. Now she's a f who? It's a lie. Come on, Glenn. She likes Monica's titties more than you do. Everyone knows which way the wind blows there. I need to see this Monica. Everybody is praising her boobas. I need to see them. <laughs> I did. I knew it. That's why she didn't fuck me at Fatty's birthday party. Yeah, that's the only reason. Not because you're a weirdo. <laughs> she didn't fuck you. Cut your 40 and you still live with your mom, Dennis. <laughs> Shots fired by Eugene. Light laughter sounds off in the room and feels nervous. Clausia said she made advances on her and then she thwarted them. Ruby then threatened her and told her to end her relationship with the deceased. This is some sordid shit. It's also the kind of garbage our Miss Aronier puts out to cover her own ass. Sort of, but he doesn't have to know that. She did tell us when we were close to arresting her. She just told us Ruby made her scared and she spilled the beans. That ruby is queer as cabaret, now that I start thinking about it. I don't know why I didn't see it earlier. He looks out the window, pensively. And that's okay. Some are queerer than others. You can still be a hardy. But if you bring your own personal shit into our outfit... If that's the case, then it's not right. But it's not the case, right? There are many pieces that fit together that way. Eugene, face it. It's not why did you kill him or as a cover up. Maybe it's all part of a leadership challenge. When Clausi came downstairs, Ruby appeared to know that something was wrong. Nah, man. That's just Ruby. She's got shit under control. That's her whole thing. That's why she's so good. Plus, man, it's like female intuition. You know, women talk to women. Which is sort of why we need someone on the team who they talk to. Eugene wants a woman on the team so they can do their job. That must be hard. Half of Martinez is female. Yes, female intuition, that's what it was. You're right, Eugene. Roll your eyes. Yes, she's, ju she's just got her shit together. That's how she knew. Or she knew what happened because she killed him. Not so useful. Fucking hell. The blonde man is in some kind of anguish that makes him stare into his garlic bread bowl intently. Betrayal is not painless. Even the doubt of it hurts. Maybe she killed him because she thought it was it would curry for it would curry favor with you? Okay, I have no idea what this means. I just know curry is food. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Earn favor, okay. Hmm, curry. Should it be Carrie? What? I don't, I'm scared to say the other things because I don't want to piss him off. And uh, this, I'm not gonna say. I don't know. Maybe it is what I should be saying. No, Curry is right. Curry favor is a phrase. Maybe this? You had expressed on occasion your dislike of the mercenaries' presence in Martinez, right? Whack someone in my district? That doesn't carry much favor with Titus Hardy. She has to know that. He rubs his chin and looks out the window. Oh, it looks like I have to say all of these, otherwise it just won't stop. Okay, so it's not why'd you kill him, it's why did she organize the cover-up. And I suppose you have a theory about that too, cop. She could have just co She could have just been covering up for herself, Titus. Think about it. Why go through all that effort? 
It was her idea, wasn't it? The hanging. You went along, but she suggested it. She had, like, a fully formed plan and shit. Right when she came back downstairs. Really, Shanks? Clausio wanted to talk to another girl, that's all. She was just the first one up there. I could have come up with that plan if I'd have been first. Time for a logic demonstration. Eugene, let's assume you killed him. Shanky, let's assume you killed him. Titus, let's assume you killed him. Shanky? I didn't do it, fucker. It wasn't my plan. You probably did, though. It's just a thought experiment. Think, Shanky. You killed him. You got up there, shot him, got down. Would you prefer to go on a trial with your buddies as part of a lynch mob or alone for committing murder? Fuck you, man. I would never fuck my guys over like that. Especially for some bird. She didn't either. She would never do that. Why aren't more of you defending her? This is fucking stupid, Titus. Glenn, I thought the same thing when she skipped town and left us in this shit. Oh, so he didn't rule her out completely. And she skipped town. This is good. Maybe it's all part of a leadership challenge against you, Titus? I don't think so. Titus, you have to see it. Things don't add up and we need to talk, talk to her. Silence. He looks around the room. The old man in the corner nods. Yeah, I see it. There's one more thing I've been wondering about. Ever since you asked me where she is. Add it to your list of suspicions, if you won't. I don't know. I don't know where she went. She just got up and left. Got real scared, too. Wouldn't tell me where. However hard I asked. Wanna know why? Why? She was afraid I would tell you. Maybe she was right. By now, I probably would. She knew there's evidence on her. And she knew we'd find it. This is typical suspect behavior. Why fleeing is always incriminatory. Hmm. Perhaps. Ask her if you find her. It won't be easy, though. She made sure of that. When did she leave? Friday afternoon, when you first arrived. I got word the RCM was in town. Then she came in to see me. Told me she was leaving. That's when we had our little conversation. What was she scared of? I told you. You. Me, as in the RCM? No, you. As in the cop with the sideburns and the disco clothes. I knew it. Don't forget the funny tie, too. I wonder... <laughs> I want to say that. How can I forget? <laughs> Not that you're tie. <laughs> you know, when I first saw you limping here, I thought she was paranoid or sniffing her own supply. But now I'm not so sure. Uh, what else did Ruby tell you about me? Do you have any clues on where Ruby went? She's not far. We know that much. She didn't take her lorry, so... She's on foot. Okay. Good fucking luck, man. She knows this place like the back of her hand. You'll never find her. Yeah, Elle. And we won't either. She's not really a hardy candidate anymore, is she? She's not, Glenn. About me? Have you, have you looked for her? A little. On the coast. Where have you looked for her? More precisely. More precisely? On the coast. Past the water log. She's not here, so I'm thinking she's there. Maybe she's in this bunker thing with the chain in the water. Can you tell me where on the coast I should start looking? Sure. There are some shit houses there, a center block town. The fishing folk there refuse to unionize, so that's one place we haven't looked. Mm -hmm. I hear they have a shack where junkies sometimes crash. Time for you to step up. Okay. We will start there. One more question. What does Ruby look like? Boyish. Hair's red. Dyed. She looks like a Lowry man. Do you know what she's doing with Ulan frequencies? The what now? I have no idea. Boys? She said she's building a... a pale emitter. Okay. What? <laughs> we were talking about radio equipment. She said she's doing Ulan frequencies and a hail something. I don't know more. Okay. This guy barely understands what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. There you have it. Okay. Hail something. It's not much, but it'll do. It'll do. Go. It'll have to. He puts his hand out. Shake it. His grip is firm and reassuring. 
like holding a piece of unpolished granite. I feel like we're kind of, kind of, you know, building some kind of respect for another here. We may not like it, but we have to kind of work together at the moment. So I'm, I'm glad that they're cooperating for real. Not just granite, tightly packed RCM sergeant material. Should be a cop, Titus. Just think it. No, he already is a sergeant. That's what you're feeling. He just wasn't sure what you are. All right, guys. Mostly did exploring went like an hour longer than I should have, but now for tomorrow, we have stuff to do. What is it? You think you have a pretty hot suspect right now, don't you? That ruby of yours. I don't need this criticism right now. This chapter is closed. For tomorrow, we can talk to the people. I guess I actually came here and talk to the people because my intention was to ask about Ruby. I couldn't see a person anywhere. What is with this stuff here on the side? And nobody had an option when I was talking to them to ask about suspicious people or anything. So yeah, I guess we will ask around again and see if any dialogue options open up when we talk to them. But that has to wait until tomorrow. Like I said, we already did a bit longer than planned originally, but I think we we're making some, some good progress, right? We investigated this area. I tried to get into church, broke my, or Kim's crowbar. Now, tomorrow, we're gonna talk to all the people again and see if they know anything about a ruby.